Dan Randolph, and you're watching Irish Football Fan Hello, TV. welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we are here to talk about the final word between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. I have Ash Dunbar from the UCD Waves women's football team joining me to talk about this wonderful, wonderful result. Um, well, I don't know if you want to call it a result, but uh, what were your thoughts going into the game uh, originally? I thought we could have gotten a positive result out of the game going into it. I thought that we could have shown a lot more desire like and a lot more hunger and want to win the game like and there was just nothing like Yeah. There's yeah. like a straddle about like even with, like you would look at our squad on paper compared to their squad and you, you yeah. would think that, you know, oh you know, maybe if we had a different manager we probably got we probably would have been going in thinking, Oh yeah, we could smash these or whatever. But yeah, I don't yeah. think I think anyone who was kinda realistically looking at it going, These are gonna be tough to break down, we don't score goals and yeah, I yeah. think with the with the way it lined up, I mean, you had Randolph and goal, Lenehan, Duffy, Egan, and um, well, that was that they play, obviously back playing okay. the back three again, which for me that formation doesn't seem to be working. But um, then he had James McLean playing this left wing back role, which everyone knows that he just doesn't fit yeah. that role. Yeah, it just yeah. seems to be a case of he's just trying to get McLean in there, just just to play him. Way. And yeah. the thing that really irked me was. So he can't even play now against um, them. He's suspended. Yeah. So what's the point? Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. And well, obviously Coleman's back captain, which I think you know everyone's yeah, yeah. pretty much happy to see Seamus back in there, um, except for Johnny because he wants a Matt Hardy, <laughs> but Matt Hardy has a facial, not fatal injury. But um, yeah, I mean Coleman. He, well, we kind of get to his performance later on, but uh, and then he went with this midfield tree, you know, the token gesture for uh, Glenn Whelan. Yeah, that's fair enough, though. Yeah, I, th- I to be honest with you, I thought he game. actually had a decent enough. You know, he didn't play too badly. Yeah. Considering the twenty or thirty minutes he played. Yeah, yeah. But uh, then he had in front of him, he had Odeoda and Brady again, and and Hendrick. So it was just a, it was kind of all over the place. I think. Yeah, it's too congested. Like, like everyone's playing through the spine of the pitch, like. Yeah, it's where we're playing like a diamond. So you had Glenn Wheel and two midfielders and then Brady. And then you had Callum Robinson very much isolated up top. So, yeah. And it was kind of very very evident early on that, you know, this is going to be a lump ball a situation. Night, like, yeah. For me, I, I don't see Egan or Lenahan starting. Obviously, Shane Duffy will against against, North, yeah. um, against Denmark, Denmark. Sorry. But to, for me... I'm just kind of looking at that team. I I really don't see how, you know, Lenehan gets in at all. Yeah. Overall, he didn't have a great game. We kind of get to how he played in in a little bit, but um, I think John Egan's quite good. And I think yeah. he plays the ball out from the back, which not a lot of our defenders will do. He he he'll look comfortable in possession and be able to kind of give it out, pass it off, and you know look for it again. He always he always makes himself available for the pass as well. Yeah, but, yeah. But McLean, you know, I didn't see our full backs or wing backs, whatever you want to call them, get beyond. They didn't get past the halfway line, like, and it was like that our team were afraid to even get past the halfway line, like, or play the ball up there. Yeah. And if it was, it was just a lump ball up like Robinson, like. Yeah, but even at that, there was they were trying to hit diagonal balls, and yeah. McLean would go up. The balls would be going too far, too high, and they'd be going out, out of play for a yeah. throw-in all the time. So it was just a case of like pure frustration, pure frustration. I mean, look at the... We had eight shots in total, two on target. Yeah. You know, oh, they yeah. had three, uh, sorry, three on target, which pretty much Dan Randolph kept us in the game for. Absolutely, but, um, yeah. The, I suppose you're looking at the players that we, we put out, okay, you could argue all Dowda and Brady and stuff like that would be and Hendrick and stuff like that would probably be starters going forward anyway. Yeah. Like obviously it was nice to see Robbie Brady back. I don't think anyone would argue that, yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone would have argued him in the starting eleven anyway. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So uh, between him and then like is good, but he's not a number ten. No, I like Odell. He gets the ball down when he wants to play football. He's a bit like Wes like and he yeah. wants to get the ball going forward, like you know, but he's no one really to kind of link up with. There's no one really available, like you know. Well, that's it. We don't get bodies into the box yeah. as well. Like I can't remember the last time we kind of got a couple of chances and we we, we had a striker hold the ball up, bring our wingers or midfielders into into play, and then get the ball into the box and you Everyone know try and get them. Everyone's getting up the pitch, like yeah, they lump the ball up and then like no one's up there. Yeah, that's it. Well, I, I don't know what you made of Robbie Brady's performance, but I actually thought he was quite good. Like I thought he was. I, I put out a tweet saying, you know, he looks a level above and people were yeah, like, oh, yeah. he, was, he delivered a couple of uh, set pieces. That's about all he did. But 
for me, when he's on the ball, he's just... We talk about people wanting to receive the ball and, you know, not being afraid to take it in. He was, for me, the only one looking to get the ball, take it in and, and give it off. Yeah. And every time he was on the ball, he looked assured. Like, I remember he had the ball a couple of times in our own box and was just so calm. And any of our other players just want to, you know, lump it. But he just kind of, yeah, yeah. he'd drop it back to a defender or he'd drop it back to Randolph and then he'd just get himself back into position. But, like, go back to, like, Randolph. I mean, I think... They have a chance and he saves it and then it's cleared. And that should have been, you know, the kick up the arse, basically. Yeah, that, that we needed to, like, drive on forward, like, but it's it's not, like... And it happens again and it's still the same, like, you know, there's just... I don't know what Marino, what his instructions are, but there's no gap and go, like, there with the lads, there like, doesn't, at all. There doesn't seem to be any uh, sort of instructions at all. It just seems yeah. to be, like, when you're playing for a you know, Sunday league team... And you're told to just go out, have fun, and yeah, yeah. you know, uh, if you don't have a position, just just play where you think you're you're, you're doing well. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Obviously, that's not the case. You're told to play here and there, but like it's just becoming a joke. I mean, the whole stuff with the Oba Femi team, where he's he's yeah, not going to declare, not, yeah. he doesn't know, he hasn't even asked him. Then he comes out and does it, but he, before that he says he's not going to travel to Denmark. Then he's into Denmark. I think well, he's just trying to make himself out to look good, like you know, oh look, I'm after getting him over to Denmark now, like I'm after getting him to, like you know, pick Ireland, like, over Nigeria or England, like... Yeah, but it didn't... For me, it didn't seem to be a case, like, even when they... When there was um, his representatives or his agent, I'm not sure, but someone came out with a statement that... Yeah, his agent it was, yeah. Okay, well, he came out and said, you know, we never... It was never in question. Yeah. So surely when you ring someone and say, oh, would you be interested in coming for a call-up? Yeah, yeah. It'd either be a yeah, yes or a no, like, do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, What's, what's, what's I don't it? think he would have came up if it was in question, like Declan, like you know what I mean. Yeah. He just, he just, but he should have been captain against like, Moldova. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's it's just you know it's it's a whole it's a whole different team with Martin O'Neill. But uh, I remember there was another chance that the Northern Ireland have where there was a counter attack and there was a few balls flicked and then eventually it comes and it's uh, one on one uh, with Randolph and he makes a great save because for me I thought I thought it was in and he makes yeah, a fantastic yeah. save maybe you should hang around with me more often <laughs> because last week I was only hanging out with him, which you can check out on a YouTube channel but uh, no like but for Randolph we would have convincingly lost Trina I think yeah no absolutely yeah he's definitely like kept us in, in the game 100% like and like I kind of think that looks a bit bad like that everyone's saying how much of a good game that he's had like you know like yeah, where, man, where, man. where was everyone else like you know what I mean yeah, I I thought now because Odell went off at half time and uh, Ronald Curtis came on from. Yeah. And I think Hooran came on for Brady. I'm not I'm not hundred percent on that now, but I do know that Hooran came on. For me again, he just he. For me, he's he just doesn't look up to the uh, international standard in my opinion. I think he is. Yeah, no, I like him. I think he's a, I think he's a good bar player. Well, I haven't seen him do anything. Like he's yeah, been given caps to. and he's been given chances, but he's he's not really taken um taking yeah. the opportunity. And neither has yeah. uh, Alan Brown. He's been given the opportunity either. That's yeah, it's true. But they're good players, like for their club. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but they do need to bring it to the international stage. Like, but who are him? You're looking at him. He's 27 now. Do you yeah. know what I mean? He, if mm. he, if he wants to start kicking, he needs to do it now because yeah. as they say in football, it's a very short career. Yeah. And 27 yeah. for someone who. Hasn't played you know, much he, he hasn't even football. really played Premier League football as well, so you know yeah, you, no, he want to be making that step up soon. Yeah. If he wants to be one of the main midfielders for Ireland, because I still don't see him getting in there ahead of Hendrick, Brady, Arthur. They're just three that off the top of my head that I can think of. Yeah, I I pop him in now instead of Hendrick. Definitely, I think that he's more comfy on the ball, like, and that he, he doesn't really give the ball away as much as Hendrick does, like you know. Yeah. But. What would you yeah. argue Hendrick's case is that he doesn't have a lot in front of him to pass to? Yeah, like I, I was actually watching in a match like and Seamus Hammond's running down the wing and there's like five Northern Ireland players around him like and he's no one to give it to at all and he ends up running the ball out of play and looking for a foul at the end line like because he's no one to give it to so yeah yeah that is a part of it as well he's no one to give it to but I just don't think that he's really kind of looked up to scratch like you know what I mean yeah Seamus didn't have his best game either and you know I'm his biggest fan yeah yeah and you know by and people are trying to say he's finished he's by no means finished I can guarantee you that but um. <laughs> He he just you go back to it. You look at Matt Doherty last month, and he was come form of his life. Yeah, you know, yeah. Premier League Player of the Month beats Eden Hazard to to the to the title of Premier League Player of the Month. Yeah. But for me, 
the system just does not seem to work. I don't think this tree at the back is for us. I mean, no, it's absolutely not for us. It's not, and it, it's it's shown it's not for us. Like it's ultra defensive. Like, yeah, but the thing is, it's supposed to be attacking, so you're supposed to have your wing backs attacking, but they don't yeah. seem to get the chance to do that. And Coleman's best when he's running at people. Like I said, there, remember that yeah. that moment where he where he's running. The fellas on a young fella playing left back, and he runs get past get past him, but. Normally that's Coleman's bread and butter, and yeah, you know yeah. he's back doing that against Chelsea and Brighton then uh, the week before, and he was back doing that, and he was he looked back to his best, but then he put him in that Irish team, and I know he got a knock earlier on, he was a head head wound. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. So other than other than that, you know, he didn't really stick out anymore. Other than the the little run that he went yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. No, he didn't really kind of do much. But as you said, he, he had no options. Like you know, Matt Doherty's playing with players that are a lot better at Wolves like I understand that like but I don't know yeah well kind of Ronnie Curtis I thought them well Ronnie Curtis done well when he came on but like he's there when Scott Hogan came on he was flicking it on for him but he was never kind of in the space that he was flicking it on to do you know what I mean yeah well as well as that it was a bit heartbroken for Sean McGuire because he went off with a hamstring injury yeah, that's absolutely. coming on and yeah. then coming off and he didn't look too happy about it whatsoever no. uh, from because I, I was up in the media section I've seen it on the screen he, he looked like he was ar- almost arguing with the physio that yeah, they coming come off. off I don't yeah. know now what the whole I didn't hear uh, afterwards if, how long he's out or if he is out or whatever or if it was just a precaution but for me for me I thought that was the perfect opportunity instead of bringing on Hogan yeah. to give Obafemi a, a chance just to get the crowd yeah up a but I was bit. very surprised that he didn't bring on Obafemi like you know like he like Scott hasn't played many games for Villa like you know and he's not really doing much either like you yeah. know what I mean whereas Obafemi is smacking the goals in like you know yeah, Southampton's underage so I thought he would have gotten a chance like and as well playing for our 19s as well like you know yeah. he's come through so why not give him the chance before the Denmark game like to play at home yeah. just even if it's just for the last 10 minutes like but yeah, even, I was very surprised in Tramon yeah and bizarrely then Cyrus Christie was brought on at the end but like is a smart now nearly you know has like a trick up his sleeve all the time just to I don't know if will let everyone like yeah it, it, it's, like, it's, what, it's, what it's, it's always a, it's someone in the starting 11 or someone comes on as a sub like yeah. the Denmark game which at the time was a year before and he had Aidan McGeady and a few others coming on yeah. and had no midfield and we were like ah we'll just go for it yeah, I get like you. no thought process behind yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, no like it was just ridiculous. Like... But and just because we, we we didn't really give it a mention, <laughs> but Randolph's second save then the one on one was uh, fantastic. So every Daryl Lennon yeah, getting yeah. caught on the ball. Yeah, yeah. So what was he thinking? Having a nap. Like I don't know. Like and he just gave your man the perfect opportunity to just it was just so inviting like for the Northern Ireland player to just run on through like you know. Yeah. <laughs> And fair play to Randolph though because yeah. he's straight off his line, he's out, he makes himself big. Yeah, he's actually and so, and he, like, yeah. You can you can see it in Shane Duffy's and he grabs him, I think, by the head. As yeah, you yeah. say, you know, well you done. got us out of jail there, you know. So Yeah, yeah. But I'm not, I'm just looking at it now and <sighs> There's a few times now in that match that there's a few players putting their hands up apologising for, you know, giving the ball away in really bad positions on the pitch where they could just free flow like an attack us, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like, by right, they should, up, you know? like you know, like that's all well and good, but like, what if it's one nil, two nil? Like, what are you gonna do about to kind of rectify that, you know? Yeah, but even at that, they weren't really, you know, breaking their bollocks to get back. No, 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 they weren't. So, like, what does that kind of tell you about the incentive for the lads? Do you know what I mean? Like, do they not care? Like, or well, for me, it all comes from the manager. So I know if I'm mm-hmm. playing for a manager who wants to tell me what to do, I'm gonna, you know, if if if, if it affects my, um, if it affects my place in the team, I'm gonna, you know, break my bollocks. Yeah, as yeah. the old saying goes, um, <laughs> to get back and, and win the ball back, you know. So yeah, it, it just it just seems like everything is just you know, it's very schoolboy like everything yeah. from the setup, you know, from his press conferences to everything else, and I'm just getting to a point now where I'm just getting fed up. I don't know how you feel. Yeah, um, no, absolutely fed up. Like it's not even worthwhile watching. I know people who got tickets like from for free like you know what I mean I wouldn't even go to watch it like you know what I mean it's getting to that stage now people are paying either a lot of money for a season ticket or else not even going with like a free ticket you know what I mean yeah it's that bad like we we actually we obviously we interviewed a few fans after the game like that and they thought they spoke quite well about you know going forward and stuff like that and they did say you know if we if we went to Denmark and played like Northern Ireland did and still got beat we'd be happy because yeah, they look like they look actually got like, to go like back in the day like in Ireland like we're by no means better football 
like they didn't play better football than other teams, but we went there with a bit of passion, like and heart and desire, Identity. and a bit of want, like and like that kind of fight in our spirit. Like, we're going out at the minute, like just rag ball rovers, let's yeah. roll, like you know. Willy nilly. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. We've no identity. We've no identity, and you know, and that's what I think. This formation I'm looking at, like, it, it, fair enough if it was a working process, but don't have a work a working process where end of Stevens, who came on done very well, mm. who will be starting against Denmark. Denmark I, yeah. I hope, unless he's going to play Cyrus Christie or something, but yeah, you would like to hope that uh, end of Stevens is 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 going to start there. So yeah. why not have him start against? Northern Ireland, so he can build up his confidence in because he hasn't played that many games for Ireland. Yeah. So why not get him in there and why not? And these are the bizarre situations that Martin O'Neill has getting us into. And for me, I think now, if, like, unless we do something in regards to the Denmark game, we're, we're for me they have to go. Like it's just, it's just getting to the point where fans don't go, even yeah. want to go anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's getting that bad. Like that people don't really want to support the team, and I'm sure like that's probably a bit of a cruel thing to say like you know what I mean because everyone wants to support Ireland at the end of the day but like you know I was on walk today and I was asked people like do you know to watch a match like would you go to match and everyone was like no I wouldn't watch that show like yeah I'd rather close the curtains yeah, and go right. back yeah. and I heard a few people yeah. say as well yeah so they wouldn't bother like so it's just getting it's, it's just getting to a point now where it's just getting so doom and gloom that like even when we're doing videos, we try to remain positive, but we can't anymore. Like, what like, positives can you take out of it? Like, hardly any. Like, not even, like, blood and young players, like, you know, or else putting people in bizarre positions or not even kind of, like, l- looking forward to the next game, you know what I mean? Like, the way you're saying, playing Ed Stevens in that game to progress into the Denmark game. There's no sort of, like, connection with anything, you know what I mean? It's just, like, let's roll out with this team this week and... Like you think about the next game, like yeah. But the thing is, if he was a club manager, he'd be sacked by now. Absolutely, yeah. You know, sense. and and I thought Craig Bellamy was brilliant on the, the debate last night, and he came out and he was like, it all starts from the setup because you look at how well Wales are doing. They're bringing two players, but they're bringing two players who have are eligible for England, but because they've been brought in, they've been blood in early. Yeah. And to let them train in with the squad and feel, feel welcome. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's that stuff at Roy Keane and the English camp and stuff like that that never helps. But Ryan Giggs isn't that type of player. He he. You know, he was at Man United for how many years and mixed with all the English players, even played English underage, but yeah. went to Wales, you know, he's he's a good example. I'm sure he's he's good at talking to the players, making them feel wanted and making That's them feel it. welcome. And giving them a bit of confidence as well, like and yeah, showing want like Martin O'Neill is doing the complete opposite. He's putting the ball in other people's courts, like and they're just kinda like being left, like, you know what I mean, to just go what? Yeah, hoping that their family will convince them to do. It should be yeah. his job. To do. <laughs> yeah, he should be convincing people exactly like well, but, it's just should people need convincing though as well? Like, well, I think there's a whole situation with Declan Rice and his, yeah. and his contract situation at at, uh, at West yeah, Ham. Now, if he doesn't sign a contract, he could start talking to clubs in January. Yeah. I think that might be a, that'll be the where things start to develop. And as I've also heard league. that the owners of West Ham want him and Josh Cullen to play for England as well because it looks good as well for the Hammers. Like you know. What yeah, I mean? but if he, if they don't, I, there's a lot of talk of Nasri coming to West Ham yeah. and getting. I think it might be eighty grand. Yeah, a week and, and Declan Rice is asking for 40 grand a week and they won't give it to him right and surely there's more worth in Declan Rice than than, than Nasri so at this point in his Nasri, career like, is Nasri is coming legs. off an 18 month ban for the Open or something yeah but um, that's that's where I'm going with the with the Rice situation he can he can speak to clubs now in January if he's not offered his contract and go for free in the summer yeah so he might be looking at that and going right well I'll wait I'll wait um, and play hardball and then once I get my thing, then I might declare for it. And I think that's the only thing that kind of comes into it. Sky, Sky Sports were wrongly, you know, confirming reports that he's, on, he's gone to England and stuff like that. So I just don't think he'll get into that England squad. Like. Yeah, well, I'm not really, I'm not really, you know, bothered about it. But yeah. I just think that's that's the situation at the moment in regards to um, just the situation. Yeah. And, you know, until... I'm not really going to speak much more about it until it actually comes out and yeah. we find out what the real story so is because about, yeah. yeah because yeah, yeah. Yeah, so much speculation it's so much false about, like, yeah. so much false stories and you, you don't know what to believe so I think he's still liking all our Irish players pictures and stuff like that and I think you know people are like oh he can do one but if he comes in declares and does well and then you know he scores a goal or a big goal in a qualifi- qualifying game or something yeah. like that it can all change it cannot, people will say this it'll obviously be it's the same with Roy Keane and you know, no one would welcome him back for walking away, and then half yeah. the people did, half the people didn't. It's just one of those things, and we are very split on a lot of things in Ireland. I do believe that, and a lot of things we, we are split 
fifty percent would say yeah, fifty percent would say yeah, no, definitely. and that's just that's, that's just understandable as well. Like yeah, so maybe. look, if you if you don't support him, that's fair enough. I know that if he's if he's back in the Ireland squad, I, I'd support him because I, I feel yeah. as though he, he would have to. But we don't know what's what's being told to him. We don't know what's he he might have an issue. I know that if I didn't like a manager, I would leave. Um, but he might just be leaving to wait to see. Like if Martin O'Neill loses against or Ireland loses against Denmark, and yeah. uh, you know O'Neill may or may not be still in the job, and I some other manager comes in, he might still be there. Like, like yeah. who else are they gonna get in? Like, yeah, I think that's a situation that yeah, uh, the people problem, in the comments like, you know. can make a judgment on yeah. that because every time, every time, yeah. every time I make a uh, suggestion about manager, I get my head chewed off. But, like uh, how like. Well, I've said Chris Hewton numerous times. And I, I think that off. he has another big job before Ireland, though. He's yeah. a lot in the tank still, like, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah definitely. And he was badly treated uh, in, in, in clubs before that as well. Yeah. But I just think he's he's came through. He's played with some of the best Ireland squads. He was there with McCarthy. He was there yeah, with Brian Kerr. So he knows what the about. But I do believe uh, a few people have said that he wasn't best treated when he was with Kerr uh, um, at the time. But I don't know too much about that. I've only heard reports. Yeah, it's the same no, as anything. Yeah. You don't know mm. who you can or what you can believe, you know. But yeah. are you confident going into the Denmark game? Do you think that no, they might rest all. they might think they might rest some players? Oh, I don't really think so, no. I just said like the FIFA rankings, you know, it affects each game, each international game is affected by it, so why would they rest players like but even if they did rest players they still have good players on the bench, like, you know. Yeah. If Pilsen is dropped like they'll put in Dahlberg like Two yeah. young class strikers like Jorgensen as well. Yeah, he exactly. squad didn't so, run against Wales. They they have a bit is more like squad depth. Well, of course, a bit more than us. Like you know, and they have more talent than us as well. So I do think that even any young players that they bring in, if they do, they'll still play really well. Like and most likely be us. Like yeah, I I I, I have to agree with you on that. But yeah. Uh, mm. I think we'll leave it there. We haven't got much to talk about more about this game. I mean, what how how long can you talk about a nil nil? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not much positive to take out. Yeah, I know. Like, well, you know. Other than maybe Ronan Curtis and Darren Randolph. But uh, yeah. that's been the final word. Huge thank you to Ashton for coming in on the show. Thanks very much for having me. Thank Great you. Great debut. Actually, first female yeah. to come on the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there you go. But uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're aiming for that 4,000 before 2019. And we are 300 and something away. I have to check my phone just to, uh, to check that out completely. But... Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are watching and you haven't subscribed already. And don't forget to give this video a like. And give uh, Ashton a follow on uh, Instagram. What's the what, uh, what's the title? Ashton Bear. There you are. So uh, check her out. And uh, thanks for watching. Have thanks a great day. Much.